Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with a January book haul. So we've been on summer holidays here and I did do some book buying, uh, among other places at South Seas Books, one of my favourite bookstores at Port Elliot and locally here in Adelaide. And I might have even ordered one online. Uh, so I thought we'd just see what's in store. The first one is A Burning by Mega Majumdar. And Mega Majumdar is coming to Adelaide, I think via live stream it might be, um, for Adelaide Writers Week. We're having a mix of live events and live streaming direct to the gardens, the Women's Pioneer Memorial Gardens in Adelaide. So it's very exciting. I think it's one of the first major, if not the first major writers festivals to be back live and with author events. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And so Annie and I thought we'd read some of the books in advance of Adelaide Writers Week to get into the spirit. So this one, A Burning, is set in India. It starts off with an attack on a train and a young woman who is Jivan, one of the main characters, writes something on Facebook about the attack. And I think her comment is, if the police don't help ordinary people like you and me, are they any, is the government also a terrorist? And it's a throwaway line or comment that she makes, but it ends up with her being in police custody, uh, arrested. So that's the premise of the story. And then we follow two other characters. One is called Lovely, who's an exuberant hedra and wants to be a Bollywood star. And the other one is P.T. Sir, who's an opportunistic a PE teacher or gym teacher. We follow them, but they all intertwine. I think the stories come together. Um, and I've just started this because we're talking about it on Friday for the podcast. So today's Monday, so I have to really get my skates on. It's engaging so far. I won't say any more, but stay tuned and I will let you know what I think once I've finished that. So that's A Burning by Mega Majumdar. Then Exciting Times by, I think it's Nisha Dolan. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And this has been on my radar. A lot of people raved about it last year and compared it with Sally Rooney, with conversations with friends or normal people in the sense that it's a contemporary fun story and told in that fresh style, I think, that Sally Rooney is known for. It also is set partly in Hong Kong. So Ava leaves Ireland aged 22 and goes to work in Hong Kong and I've spent a lot of time in Hong Kong so that appeals to me just to have a book set there. I think will be fun. So that is exciting times. Let me know if you've read any of these as well. Um, this one, Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. So this is another one that we're reading um, in the lead up to Adelaide Writers Week and very exciting that Fernanda Melchor is attending. I think again this will be via live stream but it will be wonderful to hear her speak. So Hurricane Season, I actually don't know anything about it except that it was shortlisted for the Booker International Prize last year, I think. And a lot of people, my recollection, I could be wrong, but my recollection was that a lot of people expected it to win. I think it was in that blue cover, that striking blue cover by Fitz, is it Fitzcarraldo Editions, the publisher? And it was talked about a lot and quite buzzy and then the other the one that won the discomfort of evening hasn't appealed to me so I thought maybe I should come to this one and then uh, I heard Fernanda Melchor was coming to Writers Week and Annie said let's do it um, for the podcast and then just today I was watching a video by Sean Mooney on Sean the Book Maniac and he did his effed up tag which is fantastic and I'm very tempted to do the tag myself but one of them he just just said about this book it was so bleak it was a delight to DNF it and so that's put me off a little bit but I, I'm also intrigued so let's see what it's about it's the English language debut of one of Mexico's most thrilling and accomplished young writers in winner of the International Literature Award 2019 so it comes with high praise um, inspired by a real event it's a moving portrait of lives governed by poverty and brutality, misogyny, prejudice, children discover a decomposing body, 
the village is rife with rumours about the murder of a revered woman who had carried out shamanistic customs. Visceral language, um, a heart-rending tale of dark suspense. So there's a criminal investigation, a portrait of violence and a timeless tale of love and hatred. So I'm intrigued. It, it sounds like something I haven't read before. So um, let's see, stay tuned. That's hurricane season. Again, let me know if you've read it. Was it bleak as was it as bleak as Sean said? The next one I bought, which I'd seen, I think Jacqueline at six minutes for me has spoken about is Growing Up Disabled in Australia. And this is edited by Carly Findlay. And uh, I, I don't know much more about it except that uh, I think it will fill a gap in my reading in the sense that I don't see many disabled characters in fiction or just off the top of my head I can't think of many and um, so I think this will be good to redress that and I'll read that and again because it's essays um, it'll be something I can dip in and out of so that should be good and I love the cover as well so growing up disabled in Australia and that's part of the series I think where we've got uh, growing up Aboriginal in Australia, growing up queer in Australia, I'm pretty sure that one exists. I don't have that. I did get the Growing Up Aboriginal and it had a lot of essays. It just had so many essays that I almost got overwhelmed with that one. But looking forward to this. The next one is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson and Daisy Johnson made me do it because I was looking at Twitter one night and Daisy Johnson had bought or received two books and this was one of them that she said she was so looking forward to and I trust her judgment. So it's only a slim book. It's a beautiful hardback edition. Um, I don't know much more about it. It says it's a love song to black art and thought by, uh, that's Ya Gyasi who says that. It sounds wonderful. So it's two young people who meet at a pub in South East London both are black and British both won scholarships and struggled to belong they're artists he's a photographer she's a dancer and tentatively they fall in love but they can still be torn apart by fear and violence so this sounds really good it's been blurbed by some of my favorite authors including Nikes Shukla Diana Evans Candace Carty Williams so looking forward to that one that's open water um, and I don't know anyone else who's read it. So again, let me know if you have any thoughts on that one. And then the other one that I bought when I was in the bookshop was The Godmother, a crime novel by Hannah Law Kerr and, or Kerr, and it is, I think, translated by Stephanie, yes, it's translated by Stephanie Smee. And this is one of the rare times I've bought a book uh, just on a whim in the sense that I love buying books by whim, but often I have heard of them before I buy them through some channels. And so this one, I've never heard of it before. Really, I just liked the idea of French and crime and it sounded really intriguing. It won the European Crime Fiction Prize. It's about Patience, who's 53. She's a translator. She does police phone taps. And then she has a revealing set of wiretaps and decides to get infiltrate the machinations of a massive drug deal so she inadvertently gets into a new career and becomes the godmother so I thought that sounded really fun I will let you know how I go and I just sometimes feel like a crime and I love the French sensibility um, so this should be really good that's the godmother um, but I've never read anything by that author so it's an unknown and then one that has been recommended to me so many times I ordered it on uh, Booktopia I think this is in the dream house by Carmen Maria Mercado and Annie raved about it I think last year with one of our special podcasts and I can't remember which which one it was uh, but she's raved about it other people have had it in their top 10 for 2020 and I haven't read anything by Carmen Maria Mercado but this just sounded like the one to get but she's the author of Her Body and Other Parties. So maybe that's the one Annie raved about. But either way, she sounds like an amazing writer. Um, this is a wildly innovative memoir of love gone bad, 
a harrowing relationship with a charismatic but volatile woman, struggling to make sense of what happened, and it goes on from there. So this sounds really intriguing and I'm looking forward to it. So that's in the dream house. That's my book haul for January. I am still trying to read the books on my shelf, which I've found really satisfying. So I haven't been buying too many books, but it's always fun to find something new in the bookshop. So let me know what you've been reading or any new books that you have acquired recently, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.